In this tutorial screencast, we'll talk about the mechanism of the Fischer esterification in which the carboxylic acid is transformed into the ester derivative. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with acetic acid. So this is the two carbon carboxylic acid. That's our acid functional group. We're going to react that with our two carbon alcohol ethanol in the presence of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And the product that we're going to get is an ester. So we have ethyl acetate, and our byproduct is water. So in this reaction, we want to determine the mechanism of how this is happening. So overall, what is happening, we're doing a substitution of OH for this ethyl. And we're going to see that this oxygen that I'm coloring in red here ends up being the oxygen that is observed in the product. So this oxygen that is colored in blue ends up being the oxygen in water uh, byproduct. So let's go ahead and start this mechanism. We're under acidic conditions. So we have sulfuric acid, and I'm going to represent that as H plus, or specifically hydronium H3O plus. So we're going to use those as, as pretty much equivalent. So the first thing we do in this mechanism is protonate the carbonyl oxygen. So we want to protonate that carbonyl to activate it for attack by the ethanol nucleophile. So this reaction is run under equilibrium conditions. So when we protonate that carbonyl oxygen, notice now that the positive charge is going to reside on that oxygen. So let's go ahead and draw a resonance form in which the pi bond electrons are now located on that oxygen. And the reason that I want to do that is to demonstrate why the carbon itself is electron deficient. So this oxygen now has two lone pairs. We have the original acid oxygen here. So now the positive charge is on the carbon. So that's a resonance stabilized carbocation. It's electron deficient, so it's an electrophile, and it will react with our nucleophile, which is ethanol. So at this point, the ethanol comes into play. The arrow starts at the lone pair of oxygen, and it's going towards the electron-deficient carbon. So we're forming an oxygen-carbon bond. So now this oxygen bears the positive charge, and what should be pointed out is the hybridization of this carbon atom has now changed to sp3, and it's still at an oxidation state of 3. So we have a sigma bond to oxygen, sigma bond to oxygen, and sigma bond to oxygen. So we're still equivalent to what we started with at oxidation state 3 of the acid. So in this next step, we're going to do a proton transfer from this oxygen. So we're going to invoke water to do that. 
from our initial hydronium ion. So acid-base transfer. So let's go ahead and draw the hydronium out. So this is where we're at in our mechanism. We have this carbon as sp3 hybridized. And if we look, how do we get from this to the product? Well, we have to rehybridize back to sp2, and we have to lose an OH. So in our mechanisms, we've talked about hydroxyl being a poor leaving group. So under acidic conditions, it gets protonated. So we're going to use the hydronium to do that. So this is an acid-base proton transfer here. this oxygen is now bearing a positive charge. So we've now activated that oxygen to leave and so we can have a lone pair from this OH group do an elimination. So we've said that an elimination is formation of a pi bond. We're forming a pi bond, we're breaking this sigma bond. So that's leaving as water. So above the arrow we'll write minus H2O. So we're at a protonated carbonyl and we can go ahead and have a water molecule, do an acid base reaction to abstract this proton, giving the carbonyl oxygen its second lone pair, ending up with our ester, which is called ethyl, and the two carbon acyl ethanoate. And that regenerates our acid catalyst. So overall, this has been a presentation of the mechanism of the Fischer esterification between a carboxylic acid and alcohol under acidic conditions to form an ester plus water. The fact that we are under equilibrium is important. If we want to drive the equilibrium towards the product, we can remove the water as it's formed. So there are many methods in organic chemistry to do that, and this is an example of the Le Chatelier's principle.